All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakwadash, the by honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth, in sincerity and wholeheartedly, is Shalom unto the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalom unto you. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This video is inspired by, you know, people that I run into and people that I'm around all the time and they can't help this, um, their self to talk about the future. Like most conversations that I have with people, especially at my job, they always talking about, Oh yeah, man, I'm looking about retiring and about, you know, um, my job is like majority of older people, which is the way that I like it. And you know, I got people, I work with people who've been at my job for, you know, like 25 years, things like that. So people talk about like, yeah, five years, 10 years, you know, I'm about to go down south and, you know, about to go to Florida, about to get me a little beach house. And, and it, it's very, very vexing, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, they don't know the truth, you know? So, but it is vexing. Cause like I said, it's like, I literally, hear these type of conversations every day you know even from my household I um I hear these type of conversations and you know it's sad when you when you're I could, I could like put it like this somebody in your household is a man of the Lord and you know his um beliefs and you know you pretty much know the gist of the message how this is temporary and it's no future and people still, even if they know what you're about, they will still talk about the future. And it's because it's not because they're disrespecting you. It's just that the truth have no place in them. So it really goes in one ear and out the other. Sometimes it can seem like the people that you're around are in tune with what you're talking about. They might shake their head. They might even ask a question or two. They might even agree with you with certain things. But it just that day <laughs> or that minute that um that conversation happened. You know, in one ear and out the other, man. So I want to start off with this because, oops, <laughs> I want to start off with this. But this is what people don't understand. Matter of fact, there's so many scriptures coming to my head. Let me start off with this one then. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that one, but I'm going to read it because as he, I meant to put uh, Matthew 24 and 35. We're going to get that next. So it says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world. So right here is telling you that it is going to be an end of an age, because when you go into this word world, it's talking about an age. See, when people see the end of the world, they thinking about the whole earth being blown up and no existing of it, no existence of anything. Ecclesiasticus, I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse four said that the earth abideth forever. So that's for people who don't have understanding. But yeah, let's talk about the end of the age. So when you go to Revelation 21 and one, it said new Jerusalem coming down from heaven and a new heaven and a new earth. Right. That's talking about a new rulership, all right? A earth, a new age is being ushered in, which is Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shah's kingdom. That's what it's talking about when it say that a new heaven, a new earth. It's talking about a refreshed earth and a new management, all right? Just like this world is given to the hands of the wicked, the world to come is going to be given to the hands of the righteous. So, so I wanted 35. So, when it say heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away, which means that because you got to understand. So when this age, because this is what the age symbolize of the end. Right. So when because we ain't about to go into all of that, because the, the, the video would be too long. So if you are new and you and because and I'm about to quote a lot of things, ask for what you don't understand. And I make a video on it. But so. The end represents the elect being beamed up into a chariot. Okay. The scriptures call it translated. All right. Uh, 
Enoch was the first one to be translated. So we're going to be translated, Lord willing, we part of the elect. So that's that's the symbolize of the end of the world. And then by and then while we are in the chariots, we're going to be looking down on the matter of fact. Let's get to the point real quick. Let me see. So it says, and I, because I'm, uh, forget it. I'm, I'm gonna start. From, I'm gonna start from one. And then I'm gonna get into the quick lesson. So it says, and I saw another sign in heaven and great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of the most high seven, which represents completion in most contexts, which is, this is one of them. So when the seven last plagues happen, that's ushering the new world and the old world have passed away, which is the age. The new age is being ushered in, which is Yahweh Bashim Abishai's kingdom. And I saw as it were, see of glass mingled with fire. This is above the firmament. Okay. And them that have gotten the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the most high. Like I told you, I'm not going into this because that's a whole separate lesson of what I want to go to, but the spirit brought it here. Um, and it said, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the most high and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are your works. Lord power, almighty, just and true are your ways. Thou king of saints, who should not fear you, O Lord, glorify your name for you has only are holy for all nations shall come and worship before you for your judgments are made manifest. So this is what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven after we come down. All right. Revelation 21 and one, like I quoted. So now. So heaven and earth shall pass away. Talk about this world ushering the new world. But my word shall not pass away, which means because when you read the scriptures, there's a lot of prophecies that have it came to pass. What we're talking about right now haven't came to pass. So when the missiles hit, the word is still going to be going because what the scriptures talks about, it talks about the kingdom of heaven. So the kingdom of heaven is all through the scriptures. So going back to the original point is that you got people talking about the future. There is no future. OK, this election if, if if it even come to pass, because, you know, you got terrorists, uh, so-called terrorist attacks that's supposed to happen, civil war, you know, all these things still will happen because it's in the scriptures. But they talking about, you know, it could probably happen before the election. We'll see. But the point is, is that. No matter who's in office. Whoever be in office, they're going to usher in. The last of the last of the days. Okay. So there is no future. So going. Matter of fact. I was meditating on this scripture. I think it's 736. I think. I said 26. Uh, 36. It said whatsoever you take us in your hand. Remember the end and you should never do a miss. So when they say you should never do a miss, that means that you should never fail. That means that you should never, you know, uh, go out of the way to do something that don't please the Lord because you always have the end in mind. So, of course, whatever you take in your hand, you know, you got a job, you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do, provide for your family, yourself, you know, get your daily bread. But but you got to remember the end and it say you should never do a miss. Because. I wonder if they got another translation down here figured. I'm going to read this one. It said, and stretched out your hand to the, no, that's not it. See, that's that, that translation don't even got nothing to do with anything, but anyways. So the point is, is that if you remember the end, you understand what's about to come to pass. You understand that hell is about to come. Death and destruction is about to come. The Lord literally said that wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. So he's going to bring sword, famine, death and destruction. That's in second Ezra 15 verse five and six. And then in Isaiah 13 and 11, he said, I'm going to punish the world for its evil. Then when you go to Revelation 18, it said that sins have reached up to heaven, which means that the Lord is about to answer the call. So while people are talking about the future, there is no future. And when you have that mind state, 
guess what you're going to do for those. See, we have that mind state. We understand we don't we don't put stock into this world. We don't give a fuck about this world. All right. We are looking to get out of this place. OK, we're looking towards everlasting life. I don't want to go down with a burning building without water. But that's what literally what this world is right now. All right. And especially America. America is prophesied to be knocked off the face of the earth. And it's too many scriptures on that. Revel uh, Isaiah 13, Revelation 17 and 18. Jeremiah 50, 51. Oh, and 49. It's, it's some more. I just, oh, uh, 2nd Andrew 16, uh, 12, uh, verse 12 and 13. It, it's so many, you know? So the point is, is that if you, oh yeah, this is the scripture that I want to start off with. But the Lord, he said, nah, you're going you gonna to go to Matthew 24 first. So for all you people out there who think it's going to be a future, and you doing okay right now. Like I said, I'm at a job where a lot of people make good money. I got millionaires at my job. And I got a a, a lot of people at my job are freaking um a couple hundred thousand years. You know, so they doing okay for themselves. They talking about retirement and stuff. They talk about kicking their feet up on the beach and stuff like that. So this is what the Lord said. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. So. The reason I'm about to quote all these scriptures, which I've been doing is because, like I said, I want the lesson to be too long. But like just like first Corinthians um, seven and thirty one, it said, use the world not as abusing it for the fashion of this world passeth away. When you go into that word fashion, the definition is the manner of one, a manner of life. OK, a manner of one who. Uh, dang, well, I might have to go to it. Because obviously I can't remember the def I can't say it right. Basically right now it's Satan in the mist. Because uh, that that is something that I always quote. And now I don't even know the definition now. But um, but basically uh, a manner of ones, a manner of way. Damn, I, can't, I don't know. But anyways, basically it's a manner of life. The way that life is right now. I'm going put it like that. All right. So the Lord said that that's going to change. You have to understand that the um that this that the people who run this world, the wicked behind the scenes, they are looking forward to bringing forth their order, their new world order, which is a new system, way different than what you are accustomed to. You see, see how you can go to and fro. You can get on an airplane anytime you want. You can jump in your car anytime you want. If you got the money and the means to do things, you can pretty much do it. No, not in, not in this new world that this devil is trying to bring. He, he wants to have everybody mon monitored and controlled and he's going to do it with technology. OK, this is why we prophesy about a, per a particular scripture all the time, because if you right now, you're not controlled. If you got some money for the most part, if you want to go get a new car, you can. If you want to go get a new house, you can. If you got the money, you can do that. But see. He's about to implement a system where everything is going to be controlled uh, or what you can buy. OK, so and how much you can buy and your money is going to be limited. Ain't no more under the table. Ain't no more overtime. Ain't no more savings. All right. You're going to get a universal basic income. So. But let me get through these scriptures. So it said, think upon a rap that shall be at the end in the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face. So the Lord is literally saying, listen, it's about to get so dark out here because I'm about to allow all hell to break loose. It's called Jacob's trouble. Also, the Lord said he's going to have to shorten the days. And if he didn't shorten the days, there'll be no flesh saved. This is what's coming. So there's no reason. Now, of course, we don't. But I'm just making this video for a person, you know, who may have the same sentiment. You might catch yourself thinking about the future. You might be one of those people, as the scriptures um say, where is the promise of his coming? All right. Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as it were from the beginning, because you have to understand that heaven and earth should not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. All right. So these things, the things that have to be fulfilled is nothing good. The only the best part of the, the fulfilling of the scriptures is literally the end. 
when the missiles is shot and the men of the Lord is being translated into a chariot. That's when the good start. But all the things that lead up into that, that's hell. So that's a lot of death, destruction, mourning, suffering. Yeah, that that's what's coming to the earth. So when you has enough, remember the time of hunger. And when you are rich, think upon poverty and need. See how the Lord is balanced. So right now, right, we do have enough because we obviously have, you know, daily bread, um, roof over our head, clothes on our back. The Lord blessed us. You know, the scripture says godliness with contentment is great gain. So. Now, the ones who are rich, the ones who have a great job, the ones who got a retirement plan, this is scriptures for you. The one, uh, the, the woman of a man of the Lord who want to talk about the future, who want to think that this, this truth is a light thing. All right. You better hope that the Lord have mercy upon you because of your man. All right. So you got a lot of people who, who playing games, who's faking the funk and you really ain't about this, but yeah, so. The Lord is balanced. That's why the Lord said, Woe to them that are rich for they receive their consolation. Woe to them that are um, full for they should hunger. All right. So now the Lord is about to turn things right side up. The Lord said that he's going to give us praise and fame in a land that we were put to shame. That's in Zephaniah 3 and 19. So right now we don't have no wealth and no influence, but the Lord is going to give us that because the wealth is going to be the wisdom, knowledge and understanding, which is the stability of the times that's coming, which the world don't have. So, yeah, think about this For, from the morning until the evening. The time has changed and all things are soon done before the Lord. So, yeah, all manners of life will be played out on the earth. Just like right now, Israel as a whole, you know, e even the ones who sold their soul, as you see, is a lot of celebrities getting outed. A lot of people. You know, the Lord said everything that the secret should be made manifest. So even they struggling. And then you hear all these horror stories about the industry, about how, you know, they do all this because, you know, Israel, they talented. You know, they do all this singing, all this dancing, just to end up broke, you know. So um, in conclusion, there is no future. In the Babylon, the great, the only future is the kingdom of heaven. And that's what the Lord said. He says, seek ye the kingdom and all these things should be added unto you. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't really like I said, I, I just pressed record. I literally just got back from work and I was like, you know, I'm going to do a video on all my thoughts today. So hopefully it was um, articulate enough and it was edifying. But just remember that it's the scripture says, matter of fact, let me end it on this. A classic scripture. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. So this is not our rest. It was never meant to be our rest. Our rest is the kingdom of heaven. Right now we are under curses, but the Lord blesses with the Holy Spirit. And now we are entering in to the blessings. We're not blessed yet. All right, because nobody bowing to us. That's what blessed mean. But this wisdom, knowledge and understanding, which lead up to a kingdom that will happen very, very soon. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and Shalom.